finish off the section on math and merchandising by looking at comprehensive application. We're going to take a look at how we connect trade discounts, cash discounts, markup, markdown, profit, expenses, all the things in the chapter into one big context of different things. So we're looking at combination problems. Basically, we're going to go through a process of we're going to apply a trade discount first. It's the first thing that's going to happen. When we initiate a conversation with a supplier, we're already going to have a trade discount. Before anything else happens, we're, as a retailer, we're going to get an amount off a product. So the cost, we're going to sell at $100, we're going to buy for $70. It's the first thing that happens, and that's what we're going to do right off, off the bat. So before in, invoices are billed, uh, or paid with a cash discount, before anything happens, we're going to get a trade discount first. Before selling prices are determined, we're going to get a trade discount. Second thing is going to apply cash discounts. We're going to say at some point we're going to get a better deal than the invoice price is. We're going to get $2 off an invoice. That's a cash discount. So before the selling price is determined, we may get a cash discount. Then we're going to determine selling price. We're going to apply our markup. Based on the price that we got it, we're going to apply our markup based on whatever margin heuristics that we're going to look at. And we're going to take a look at not only lot pricing, but individual pricing. The price for one unit or the price for an entire invoice. And then we're going to reverse the process, looking for any missing values. If we're looking at something else, we're going to adjust to that. So we might start with selling price. What is the right selling price to get a certain amount? Uh, what's the profit? How much are the overhead expenses? Do we make money? Did we lose money? So if, as we take a look through the three chapters, first of all, we have section 4.1. The big thing there was we had a net price, which is based on a list price and a discount. List price, and we got a discount from it. Either a rate or a cash amount. When we take that chapter 4.1 stuff, we're taking our trade discount. When we look at that in the context of a 4.2 problem, so we made a cash discount that creates an invoice, the net price that we pay there becomes the list price for our invoice, the invoice amount. Okay. So this chapter is really all about taking the language from a 4.1 context, turning it into a 4.2 context. Take it from a 4.1 context, turning it into a 4.3 or 4.4 context. All the data remains the same, but we have different language for it. So the net price, when we're looking at a trade discount, this is the price to the store. When we're looking at that in 4.2, that net price may be the total amount of an invoice, because we're going to pay the net price on our invoice. Not always, but that's usually how it's going to work. Second thing is, if we have a trade discount, the net price that we're going to pay there is going to be the cost for our, our products. If we're going to buy a product at $50, it's going to be the cost inside of the, our base problem for doing our markup. Sometimes our list price is going to be our selling price. Not always, but sometimes. So. When this occurs, well, we have this. If we have an example where we have Apple Computer. Apple Computer, everybody has to sell at the same price. You can't sell at anything else. There's a manufactured suggested retail price, and they enforce that. That's when this would occur. If that happens, this D, the actual discount, would be the markup. But it only happens if that and that both apply. It's a very special situation, and it's not, not necessarily going to be true. But it may happen. The big thing is, this happens almost always. The only time that doesn't happen is if we get a cash discount. So that's almost always. This happens rarely. Take this, I say that is rarely. 
We can also look at it in a 4.4 context when we're looking at markdown. And again, the list price and the discount, these only apply if it applied in 4.3. So usually what we're going to take a look at is the net price. It's going to be our list price there. We're probably not going to do a cash discount with a trade discount. So our net price becomes the cost when we're starting to look at market. Second thing we might do is if we had a cash discount where our net price is going to be our cost. It's the price that we pay for an invoice. It's the price that we paid to get the product. It's the definition of cost from, from markup. It's the price that we paid specifically for the product at hand. So these are going to be equal. The only time this doesn't equal that is when this equals that. So this is going to be true or that is going to be true. Okay. The other thing we have is we may take a look at the selling price, the ideas from section 4.3 where we're doing markup, selling price, cost, and markup, and how these relate is the selling price is going to be equal to the regular price for our markdown. So if we had a problem that had a trade discount, had a markup, and had a markdown, what we'd say is our trade discount matches our cost. Our cost is going to be used to calculate our selling price. Our selling price matches our selling price, and then we we'll go on. So these combined data is basically taking the language from 4.1, converting into 4.2, converting into 4.3, converting into 4.4, and then coming back and looking at the other aspects. So as an example, so Express Mark purchased case 72 travel packs of aspirin, each of the list price is $3.59 at a discount of 35%. So we have a trade discount aspect here where there's a list price and a discount, we're going to find the net. The invoice is paid early and a cash discount of 2% is saved, so we're going to get a further 2% off. If they price products that mark up 75% of the cost, what is the selling price? Well, start at the beginning. We're going to start with the trade discount first. So trade discount list is $359. Okay. So we have a discount of 35%. So we're going to find the net price first, n is equal to L, 1 minus D, which is equal to our 359 list price, minus 1, sorry, times 1 minus 0 0.35, 359 times 0.65. And so we have an original net price of $3.59 times 0.65 times 2.65 times 2.33. Okay. But we bought 72 of them, so we're going to multiply that by 72. And what we're going to have spent is $168.01. That's going to be the price of our invoice. Invoice paid early and we got a cash discount of 2%. So we can do a timeline. I'm not going to because we got a cash discount of 2%. So again, we say N is equal to L1 minus D. This is a 4.2 problem. So we started off 4.1, then we're going to do 4.2. So we're going to 4.2, our list price is going to be our net price from here. So convert that, our net price after our cash discount is $168.01 times 1 minus 2%, 0.02, 168.01 times 
198, $164.65. This is the amount that we're going to pay to cover this invoice. So the price of products marked up 75% cost, what's the selling price? Well again, what we're going to do here, if we do this absolutely correctly, we're now going to divide this by 72 to find out the individual price. So 164.65 divided by 72, $2 here, this is equivalent to $2 and 29 cents a unit. So, where cost is $2.29, the list price is $3.59. We price the products with a markup of 75% of cost. So we're going to take a look at selling price. This is our unit price. We're going to take a look at markup. So our markup is selling price is equal to the cost plus the markup. We know our markup is 75% of cost. So the selling price is equal to the cost plus 0.75 of the cost. Our selling price is 1.75 of cost, which is 1.75 times, well, the cost was, we're going to take the net price from our cash discount, net price from our cash discount is going to go into the cost problem there. So that's going to go here, $2.29, and it's $4.01. So selling price, you probably set it at $4, but $4.04 and three quarters of a cent, four dollars and one cent. Okay. So, what's cost, what is the selling price? Here, selling price is four dollars and one cent. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, if they set the price to earn a profit of 30% of cost, based on our 75% markup, what is the total profit on selling the aspirin if they're sold at a markdown of 15%? Well, again, we have all of the stuff that we did before. We have all of the context where we took at 4.1. We have our context of 4.2 here. We have our context. of 4.3 here, and we're going to apply context of 4.4. So, we have a, to do the analysis here, we say, well, profit is 0.3 of cost, markup was 0.75 of cost, and we want to find what the operating profit is selling the aspirin if they're sold in markdown. Well, we don't know what the price is, so first of all, we're going to have to calculate the markdown. So the markdown, we've got a formula for that, it's an SR is equal to S, 1 minus D, our S. Well, if we go to the last slide, our S was $4.01. So our S here is $4.01. From... Our 4.3 growth. Next thing we're going to take a look at is 1 minus D. Well, the 1 minus, the D is 15%, right from our problem, and you can find the reduced price. So the reduced price is 401 times 41 cents. Okay. Now the question is, if the price is set to 30% profit, that's what our regular price is, we can calculate what our 
E is because we say our markup is E plus P. We can solve for E is equal to the markup minus the profit is equal to 0.75C minus 0.3C. So our markup for overhead expenses was for 0.45C. And now we want to calculate the, the total profit when they're sold at a markdown. Well, we take our formula, we say S is equal to C plus E plus P. We're going to solve for profit. P is equal to S minus C minus E. And again, we do the combination things. This S is the selling price, but it's the selling price when it's sold at a markdown. So we're not going to use the regular selling price, we're going to use the discount selling price. So this is going to go there. So our profit is equal to our well, selling price minus the cost, which is from back here, 229 cost. It's not going to change, it doesn't matter if you sell it on sale or not, you still purchased at the same amount. Okay. Minus, and our expenses are 45% of cost, 0.45C. Okay. So our profit is our selling price minus, minus 1, minus 4 and 5, minus 1.45C. Saying our profit is equal to our selling price, $3.00. 41 cents minus 1.45 times our cost, which we got from before, $2.29, $2.29, so $3.41 minus 1.45 times 229, our profit is 0 0.0895. Now I took a lot of decimal here is because if we sell all of the aspirin at our sold at markup, we make 8.995 cents. Well, should we round now or multiply by 72? Well, every time we sell, we're going to get nine cents profit because that's when the cash transaction is. So our profit is 0.09 times 72 because there are 72 of them that sold. 0 0.09 times 72 on the whole thing, our profit was $6.48. So combined problem, we're going to do trade discount, possibly a cash discount, calculate a markup, figure out a selling price, apply the model as it goes along, and we're going to convert context from regular price to selling price, reduced price to selling price, net price, whatever the context is going to drive the problem. So. What do these do? Require a lot of practice. We need to understand all four sections before we do the comprehensive ap application, so we need to do a lot of practice. So do as many questions as you can. Decide when to round. Keep the grand total if you can. Each selling price should be rounded to the cent, because that's when you're actually going to be selling it. Each purchase price or volume should be used, so if we're buying 100 units, we should do that. And sales prices are calculated per unit. So we sell it per unit, sales prices per unit, Round when it's appropriate, use multi multipliers when it's appropriate. There's comprehensive applications, do a bunch of homework, ask questions, and we'll see you in class.